thank you so much for coming, spending the dinner time with us. And uh, today's topic is the uh, end-to-end device and network performance. Because performance always have two ends. Some people start looking at the device side, and some people start looking at the network side. What we want to present today is, this is, uh, welcome. This is really an end-to-end system, and we need to look at either from, when you look at from device side, you need to be aware of network side. When you look at network side, you also need to be cautious about device side. And QE Lab is, uh, established, was established back in 2010, about four years ago. And we have some people like me, Kronze, uh, working 100% of time. Also, we have Aaron and uh, Isaac, some of our colleague virtual team members who spend between 25 to 75% of time with us. So today's agenda, is first I want to introduce QE Lab. So before I start, I want to ask you, do any one of you know what QOE stands for? Besides T-Mobile, uh, our QE Lab team members. Quality of experience, thank you. Do you know the difference between QOE and QoS? Quality of service. QOE is end-to-end, QoS is just a pipe. Thank you, that's precise, correct. And uh, first, uh, we're going to talk about two projects. So one is more how we simplify network architecture to deliver better YouTube performance. Another one is how we analyze Trace is mostly collected from the device side. So the QE analyzer, or we call the QE detective, developed by our QE lab. So before I start a project, I always ask myself, why do I care about QE? Why do we care about QE? I have two reasons. The first one is personal reason, second is professional reason. So I have nine years old son who really loves to watch YouTube. So when I was driving, I still remember one day he was complaining in the back seat. He said, mom, mom, it's not working. So I have to tell him, okay, sorry, Mark, mom is working on that. <laughs> Truly, <laughs> yeah. I'm working with Google together. We are trying to improve quality of experience because Ultimately, that's what customers care about. We are here to try to enable an enjoyable experience for you. And we also have professional reason. So QE Lab, together with all the co-workers in device team, in network team, we want to shift the mentality from QE 1.0 to 2.0. So 1.0 is more like traditional telecommunication companies. Uh, mostly instrument the experience through network side. They put probes in the network interfaces to monitor what is the voice call drop rate, what is the availability. But as mobile internet evolves, the mobile cell phone and the internet world converges, we want to actually understand, move one step closer to you to understand how you use our mobile network. What is the true experience? So the first intermediate step I call 1.5 is what T-Mobile uh, is right now very proud of. We provide the best LTE speed, right? To measure how fast we're delivering the throughput. But the ultimate goal is for us to say we can provide the best web browsing experience, best video experience. We want you to have an enjoyable mobile experience. So that's what I call mobile QE 2.0. And we want to work together with all of the ecosystem, including the application developer, including the OS, to try to reach that goal. So what do we do here in the QE lab? Mainly four components. So first, we need to measure, right? So actually, how long it takes for you to open up a cn.com page on your mobile. How long for you to start load a video? 
or maybe how often your video stops that Mark will complain about. So after we measure the QoE metrics, which is for different application has different QoE metrics, some latency based, some maybe the successful rate based, then we, we are going to identify problem. If there is problem, then we need to do the root cause. We need to find out where the problem is. It might be on your device or might be in the network. Maybe device is See, the, the, the memory is too full, right? Then we need to work together with maybe application developer or maybe service provider to optimize the experience. So in the, in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about how we work with YouTube, Google YouTube actually to optimize YouTube performance. So as I told you, we have a small team, including um, real and virtual team members. So we need to scale. We need to work with engineering team in T-Mobile. We need to work with operation team in T-Mobile. Also, we want to scale through partnership with other companies, including Google, including Facebook. And we have been working with OEM as well. Also, we have very talented students from the academic as well. So we have been sp sponsoring University of Michigan for two years, and Aaron has been working with uh, UW for field project, right? So we actually want to increase our reach by working with a lot of partners, plus some network vendors as well. So now I'm going to re-present the talk we have given together with Google in Velocity 2004, 2014 on how YouTube performance is improved in the T-Mobile network. Let me switch. Okay. So this is a joint work between Google and YouTube. No, oh, between T-Mobile and uh, Google. So we have five speakers, and I'm very sorry they couldn't join me today, so I'm going to present on their behalf. So we have Kevin, uh, the director of our device development team. So Aaron, me, Isaac, Kranzi will all report to Kevin. Also we have uh, Jeff Smith from our network performance team. We have Ankur and Andreas from Google. So the background of uh, this project is, we st start from 2012, we have been working with Google to optimize YouTube performance. And this talk only talk about one of the projects, means we bypass the TCP proxy for YouTube traffic in the T-Mobile network. And the benefits we have seen is improved user experience, like what I mentioned before, video start time, video rebuffer, and uh, even the battery life. And I'm going to go directly to the mobile challenge. So we can see the evolution. Before, not many years ago, we liberated the customer from have to be uh, in front of a desktop to you can have a mobile laptop. But still, the mobile laptop, you have to somehow plug into a wall because of the power. Now, Customer can have a very small, powerful device. You can connect anywhere, but there are challenges. The one of the major challenges is the limited power. Also, we need to support high mobility. The customer want to go anywhere. You can go to shopping mall, you can go to subway, but we all need to support this high mobility. And also, mobile data has been increasing exponentially, as all of you probably know. And in all this traffic, beside the application, beside the image, the majority traffic is the video traffic. And so we are going to talk a little bit about wireless one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, in the mobile network, we divide into three components. In the left-hand side is the radio access network. That's a very complex system because we need to support the mobility. Also, the wireless channel condition 
inherently is lossy. So this network need to re to solve the the lossy packets and need to retransmit the packets. Also, the wireless medium is the shared medium among all the customers. For example, if you use T-Mobile or cell phone, right now probably some of us are sharing the same cell, we are sharing the same radio resource. And then in the middle, there's a core network, which is hiding the variability of the wireless channel condition from the external network in the right-hand side. And So in the core network, we have many, many gateways and uh, routers to try to normalize the radio access network from the external network. So this is, uh, for example, when a UE has a request to re for a YouTube video content, it first need to send the request to the radio access network. And this will wake up the device from an idle state to a more high power state because the limitation of the device power also because of limited of radio resource, we tend to let the mobile device rest as much as possible, sleep as much as possible. So when you are requesting a video content first, we need to wake up the device from the idle state. As here you can see we have the idle to the dedicated state then you are going to, before this request reach to the external Google server, actually need to go through multiple our network nodes in the core network. So one of them is a net, device, a net box because we have limited IPv4 addresses. And also we have the mobile proxy. So proxy, as I said before, is trying to hide the variability of the mobile access network from the external network. It is very important. Mobile proxy is widely deployed in the current network. And traditionally, we have 2G devices, we have 3G devices. And the latency in different access technology are different. So the mobile proxy actually is the intermediate node in between, right? So the external server doesn't need to know, oh, this actually is a very slow uh, 2G device, or it's a very fast LTE device. This mobile proxy node actually is blocking this information, trying to harmonize between this the radio access and the external network. Also, if the external network has some variability, it's also protecting the device. The mobile uh, proxy for the video delivery also apply a, a feature called just-in-time delivery. What it means is it delivers the traffic just a little bit above the encoded video bit rate. Therefore, it ensures there's less wastage in the network. Because people sometimes just click on video, it doesn't, he or she may not watch the whole video. And this ensures the, there's no, uh, not too much video content are downloaded but not consumed. And together with Google, we decided to try what if we bypass proxy? Because right now we have widely deployed LTE network and network speed has been so fast. 2G and 3G devices are less and less. What if we just bypass the proxy? Are we going to see any improvement? So let's look at the results together. Um, this is from Google. They are very kind. They said, after we allow them to bypass the proxy, they can directly communicate to the device. So GCC stands for Google Global Cache. The cache ser server can talk to the device. Then they want to be a good uh, network citizen. They want to uh, utilize network as much as possible, but also protect the network. So they have a, used a multiple features. One is the chunk delivery, means they de divide the video content into multiple chunks, only deliver the smaller chunk. Therefore, if you stop watching, then not too much are wasted. Another two features they use is trying to pace together with the mobile network. The first one is called fair queuing pacing. Mainly, they are trying to limit their transmission rate. Before when process is in the middle, process is able to accept 
as much as possible the traffic, therefore their delivery rate is much higher. After we remove the proxy, then device sometimes can be slower. So actually, they reduce the transmission rate. Try to pace together with the mobile net, which sometimes can be lossy. Another feature is called the congestion window size clapping. So if some of you understand TCP, congestion window actually limit the amount of traffic is in the fly, uh, in the network which is not acknowledged by the receiver side. Also, they use some TCP stack, which is uh, more mobile friendly, can deal with uh, our, the real the round trip time variation of the mobile network. Um, Quick question for sure. you. Sure. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of the newer devices Oops, have can I get that? Sure, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Andrew Hirsch, Pervasio. So I know that a lot of the uh, uh, newer devices had required uh, IPv6 uh, mm -hmm. on their rollout. So um, did you find any distinction between IPv6 and IPv4 in terms of the latency? Uh, we don't see much uh, variation between IPv4 and IPv6. Only we use NAT, but it doesn't add much latency. Okay, okay. thanks. Thank you. That's a very good uh, question. And uh, we have two sets of metrics we use to evaluate the success of the project. The first set is more network centric, looking at the lower le level TCP uh, stats. And the, the last set will be quality of user experience. So these TCP metrics include the minimal round trip time and retransmission rate. So we want the retransmission rate to be as small as possible latency also be as small as possible, and the throughput as high as possible. The last one is a little bit, um, maybe not common in the field. It's a median RTT divided by the minimum RTT. So if equals to one means for the, all the packets, you get the same equal amount of round trip time, means this network is pretty consistent. You don't have some queue build up. So this metric reflects the buffer bloat problem in the field. If you have a buffer bloating, means you have many packets in the transient waiting to be delivered, then you will see this much higher. So this is the metric Google used to, to monitor the buffer bloat. And then followed by the net network usage. So uh, because from Google, actually, there's a professor who is doing the project. So they use very highly sophisticated statistic called QQplot to evaluate before and after, before proxy and after proxy is bypassed. QQplot, let me spend a little bit of time. So this is a two distribution. So for them, assuming X is uh, before, uh, Y is after. So we're trying to compare is before better or is after better? And the, the QQ plot is something like this. You plot X in the, this axis, then you plot Y here, the quantile, quantile. If X, Y are e exactly the same, you will say this will be diagonal line, X equals to Y. But if you say the, the dots are in this region, then it means Y is larger than X. If you see it here, it means x is larger than y. So we use the QQ plot to evaluate before and after. And this is retransmission. Retransmission, we want it to be as slow as possible. If you look at the, all the black dots, it's above y equals to x. So it means this y-axis is proxy connection has higher retransmission than the direct connection. Therefore, it means after bypass proxy, the direct link is better. It has less retransmission. Are you with me? Thank you. Then this is a throughput distribution. Mm, this trying to compare, the blue is proxy before, and the the black is direct. If you look at the here, this peak, you can see the proxy connection has the peak and the lower throughput. 
here x is a throughput, means the process connection actually has less speed. It utilizes network with less efficiency. And if you look at here, the direct connection actually drops significantly here and the higher throughput because they applied the congestion window size clapping. So manually, artificially, they're limiting the throughput now to how to say bloat our network. And this one is the median RTT divided by the mean RTT. This reflects the buffer bloat problem. And it shows proxy connection are more bloated. Uh, more bloated means there are more packets in transit somewhere in the network waiting to be delivered. That's when customer, when the packets reach to the customer, actually they have been waited for a longer time. And then we look at the network statistic from T-Mobile side. So proxy and direct. There are some um, network traffic increase because remember we removed the proxy, therefore just in-time delivery feature is removed. Therefore, uh, Google backs and server will deliver traffic volume more. But comparing to the, remember the data internet traffic growth, exponential growth, this is not significant to us. Also, we check on the radio access network power utilization. It's a, about the same. And the next set of metrics is used is quality of experience. And let me explain to you. So the green color here is video play time. So when you see green means video is playing and the customers are happy. But initially between, when you click on the video play until the video actually starts playing, that's initial video start time or here is called join latency. Then Maybe sometimes network is not good, then you will see the spinning wheel, then that's this color, T2 to T3, that's the video rebuffer time. And the rest can be if you want to fast forward, if you want to pause. Anyway, so most important will be the join latency, the initial video start time, and the total rebuffer time. Then the, all the green color plus together will be playback time. And from the beginning to the very end, including when you pause, including when you try to fast forward, all those uh, will be applied to battery lifetime because that's when you will make the device to be the higher power state, it will consume more battery life. And from the graph, you can see similar is a QQ plot. And the, the dots are above the Y equals to Y, so it means the direct connection actually rebuffer for the last time. And here is the joint latency. Again, the proxy network, proxy connection will have higher joint latency, means direct connection is better. Then we look at the battery life. Actually, this test uh, Kranzi did, remember for Jeff? So from this two plots, this is a power meter plot. Here means this device is always in the high power state, it will use battery life more. But here you say it goes up and down. So when it goes down, it means it will go to the sleep state. Higher, it will use more power. So this will use overall use less battery life than this one. And if we look at different video lens, the the saved battery life can be different depending on how long the video content is. So for the normally in our network, we say the average time is a watching time about 120 seconds. The saving is about 20%. And this reflects the different radio stage uh, percentage. So overall, the summary is the bypass experiment provide better quality of experience lower the retransmission rate, lower the latency, also increase the throughput, and also improve the battery life. It's a successful project. And besides this project, we were also working with Google on multiple fronts, and which will be covered maybe in the future talks, such as we are trying to experiment in um, 
different birth optimization, maybe increase the birth size, also then increase the, the amount of time device actually can go to sleep. Maybe that can improve the device battery life. Or we can paste the traffic with additional information T-Mobile can fit to Google, such as our network is in congestion. All this optimization will require uh, application to have some information from the network set. And so in exchange, so we are providing some information to Google to experiment different optimization and Google is providing the end cultural experience for YouTube to us, in, um, aggregated, also anonymized for us to help identify if there's any network problem in any nodes so we can improve. And we are also exploring some uh, device APIs or network APIs to expose those information. Uh, so this is uh, my son's picture again. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that actually he complained today. He wants me to take off. So takeaway is really the mobile QE 2.0 where we want all of us to shape to require a collaborative approach between mobile operators and the application or content providers. Now our, some of our future works including how we can expose information to each other also to standardize those. And those are email addresses from both T-Mobile and Google if you want to reach to us. Now let me switch back to the Yeah, before I hand over to Quanti to talk about QE Analyzer, do you have any questions regarding this portion? Yes, I was wondering, uh, once this was rolled out, uh, Google has typically, from my experience, not wanted to do something uniquely special for just one carrier out of the global carrier community uh, without rolling it out. So I was wondering if uh, T-Mobile was able to commercially take advantage of the fact that they were faster on YouTube and uh, better on battery life uh, compared to carrier X, Y, and Z. Uh, and if you know if Google was keeping that exclusive uh, for you guys since they helped you work with it. Uh, first, oh, I'm not aware of uh, other project between T-Mobile, uh, between Google with other operators. I don't have that knowledge. Um, second, regarding the comparison, so the metrics that Google has shared with us is only about T-Mobile, right? So they are not going to tell us what other operators are, and it's against the policy as well. So we're just trying to improve us to be as much as possible until if you know, Google recently have a movement called Video Quality Report for the, for the, like, maybe DSL or cable company, actually they are publishing that report in Canada. Uh, they are also starting that in the US, but it's not for the mobile yet. And they have the authority to say who is better or which customer is experiencing better experience. And I don't think we are in a position to say well, better or worse than others. Okay. Thank you. So as I understand what you're describing, I think what, you're, what I'm hearing is that uh, in the past, the mobile proxy is sort of a, um, a buffer, if you will, to uh, the changing dynamics of the radio area network mm -hmm. that allows the, the server, the video server, to act you know better. Yeah, exactly. And what's what you've done is you've said, well, if the video server gets smarter and we inject more capabilities into the protocol, then we can remove the function of the of this proxy server and get overall better performance. That sounds like that requires intelligence on the part of the client in the phone to know what uh, the difference between a service that it's consuming that requires a proxy versus not requiring a proxy. Because if you just simply turn off the, the, the mobile proxy in the phone, then that works better for Google, but it doesn't work better for any of the other video services that would have to have that same uh, intelligence. intelligence, right? Yeah. So does that require, uh, are you changing the client stack or are you proposing that 
all video providers would then adopt these same standards that you've discovered with, with Google? Uh, so that's a very good question. Uh, it's correct. So this requires the content provider has the intelligence to do this. It's not every uh, content provider are able to do this. That's why Google said they want to be a good network citizen and they have the resource to support all this optimization. I believe it's not only the backend server optimization, it's include some uh, client change as well. And our approach is first we experiment, then we find ways to standardize, then so other content provider, other op mobile operator also can uh, enjoy the same benefits. And we can work with maybe some major players, but certainly we cannot work with a thousand all the application providers to do this, right? So we want to standardize ways of doing it in the... So uh, as you go through this transition from old style content provider to new style, somebody's going to have to make a decision, maybe the user or maybe it's how you get your phone configured from the store, about when you switch over from using a proxy to not using a proxy. Oh, that change actually uh, client doesn't need to know. This is a purely our network architecture uh, change. I see. So we can, assuming there's a switch, just like real, real, right? We just switch going this path or going this path. Depending on which, uh, which server uh, you're pointed to then. Yeah. I got it, okay, yeah. makes sense. Thank you. Okay, so next uh, we are going to move to QE Analyzer. So this is the in-house device tool to analyze the traces. Remember we have steps, um, measurement, then identify problem. So this tool will, be, uh, will help us to identify problem, also help us to root cause. I like to tell about the QE Analyzer. QE Analyzer is a post-processing analysis tool which can be used to analyze the log files generated, uh, which, is, which can be used to analyze the log files generated during the test from different layers of the mobile device, like from application layer, IP layer, and from the radio layer, and from different layers of the, from different nodes of the network, like from the device, radio access network, and from the core. Uh, let me tell you a little bit background about the QE Analyzer. We started developing QE Analyzer back in September 2012. The main motivation behind developing QE Analyzer is to reduce the analysis time. So oh, here I would like to tell about the QE Analyzer design. So QE, QE Analyzer can analyze files from the device and from the GGSN and from the server. From the device it can analyze the log files from different layers of the device. That's from application layer. Uh, usually we collect the application layer log uh, application layer log files using logcat and from IP layer the IP layer using the pcap and PDCP or RLC or RRC that's a radio layer. We use a, a tool called QXTM. Uh, using that tool we can collect the radio layer logs and from the GGSN or P gateway we can collect the log, we can collect the pcap logs and from the server we get the log files in the format of .pcap. Using QoE Analyzer, we can input all these logs to QoE Analyzer and we can generate a, a beautiful graphs and the meaningful KPIs. So this is how the QoE Analyzer looks. Uh, we have QoE Analyzer desktop version as well as a web version. So I, I would like to tell like what QoE Analyzer can do, what kind of analysis it can do. Uh, it can do the PCAP analysis. Uh, in the PCAP analysis, it can do the TCP connection times. Uh, when I say TCP connection times, it can do all the TCPs into SYNAC, SYNAC to ACK, all the summary, and the DNS lookup times. Throughput it can draw the throughput graphs for individual IP addresses or for the, all the IP addresses present in the file. And then it can do like TCP failure analysis. Uh, when it comes to failure analysis, it can do all the TCP, how many times the TCP failures, resets, retransmissions, and all this kind of stuff. And then it can do the TCP sequence analysis. Sequence analysis is like it can draw the sequence graph for sequence numbers and acknowledgement numbers. And other feature is like end-to-end -end analysis. It can correlate all the log files between the 
you e ran on the peak gateway and then draw the meaningful results and then oh, from that we can know where the delay is or something like that it supports both ipv4 and ipv6 uh, uh, from the radio analysis it can do all the rrc tra radio transition state summary uh, and then it can do the rlc ul and dlpdu retransmissions graph and stuff using this analysis we can use like we can know like where there is a delay and stuff and then uh, in the LTE for LTE log files, we can draw the throughput from different layers of the mobile device, like from IP layer and from different uh, PDCP layer and RLC layer. And for log cat analysis, uh, we developed this for application purpose, and mostly we uh, we developed it for YouTube analysis. For YouTube analysis, it can do the analysis for video startup time, video buffer count, and other things like buffer ratio. So I would like to show you the demo how to use a QE and laser to do pickup analysis, radio analysis and other, other things. So this is the tool QE analyzer and you can add the files. Uh, first I will go through how to, use, how to do the TCP connection summary. So click on add files and choose like whatever file you are interested in. And then now here you can use whether you want to use like you want to analyze all the IPs from the log file or only one specific IP. Uh, I'd like to do for everything, then no. And select PCAP testing. And then here you have like different options like TCP, RTT, DNS, RTT. TCP, RTT using this option you can get all the TCP connection times and TCP, RTTs like SYN to SYNAC, SYNAC to IC, all these values. And when you choose DNS, RTT, you can get the DNS lookup times and inter packet arrival time, uh, how many bytes the file has and throughput graph. So once you select all the features you are interested in, you have to click on analyze. Yeah, within few seconds you will get an output. So here it is. This is how the output looks like. In the top left hand side you have like TCP retransmissions, in this file there were no retransmissions. And TCP RTT summary like SYN to SYNAC, how much time it took and TCP like average connection time and DNS lookup time. And here is all the throughput graph for all the IPs present in the log file. And then here you have like each TCP connection time, how many TCP connections were there and what was the time for each connection. And uh, here you can see the DNS, uh, DNS RTTs, like what was the query and then what was the response and how long it took to do the DNS lookup. Uh, this is the summary sheet for TCP analysis. And then, if you, and then if you want to know the TCP failure analysis, then we have to do the same thing like add files, choose any file which you are interested in. And then select PCAP testing, TCP failures, and TCP flow. And then click on analyze. Oops, something. <laughs> Sorry. It always happens for the demo. <laughs> oh, we have tried a thousand times before. Yeah, we have one developer uh, only for this part time, so we didn't really hire a professional. Did uh, anybody happen to bring a PCAP file today that they want to try to break the demo again with? I thought, well, okay. Uh, G, are, uh, do you want to tell everyone about how we may be offering this to them to you, play uh, with? If you can. Me? Uh, or, yeah, so, yeah, well, Quincy is trying to bring it up. And actually, we offer to you guys, if you want to try it out, we can give you a temporary uh, web access. So we have a web version. Uh, this is a desktop version, has more advanced feature, which is, has now been integrated to web version. But web version has a majority of feature already. So if you want to try that out, we can give you some test account. 
And I think we have some document, legal document, that you need to sign. Then we can let you try it out. Hopefully this time it works. Let's try. Yeah. So you have to choose the file and then choose the metrics which you are interested in, like TCP failures and TCP flow, and then click on analyze. So you'll get the output here. So here it'll, it'll tell you the count, like how many times the TCP retransmission happened, and how many times the TCP duplicate, how many packets were duplicate acts, and how many were like TCP resets. And then here when you go for TCP summary, here, so for each IP address, it says like how many packets were like original packets, what were the retransmission rate, and it can differentiate between the uplink and downlink. Uh, it can differentiate a percentage for up, duplicate uplink packets and duplicate downlink packets and all this stuff. So it can have like, um, it can divide the analysis per stream and per IP address. Uh, so the retransmission will translate to latency. For example, uh, you have application, right? You are trying to put some data from the server side. But if there's retransmission in the TCP level, what you experience in the application level will be longer time, slower responsiveness. So for example, we, in the past, we have looked at uh, web browsing time. If we say, okay, this page takes five seconds, what has been wrong, then we can run this. It may tell us, okay, there are so many TCP retransmissions, then we are going to do a deep dive, say what is causing the TCP retransmission. So, uh, this is not, uh, this is a lossy network, a lossy channel, right? You may have a lot of package up in the lower layer which may cause TCP transmission. So that's why this is helpful. And the next feature we have, this, we have here is like sequence analysis. For sequence analysis, what, what this feature can do is like it can, uh, if, you, if you can choose one IP address, it can draw the sequence graphs. Uh, with the sequence graphs, you can know like where the de delay and then uh, de dig deep to understand where the problem is. So choose like any file which you're interested in. Oh. By the way, most of our analysis, I think we enable the, the filtering, right? You can look at all the uh, IP addresses, or you can just filter a specific IP address. For example, in, during the test duration, we may have 10 applications running, but you know what is your application IP address. Then you can just filter that IP address specifically for your TCP flow. And so you can choose any IP addresses which you are interested in. and then click on sequence analysis. You get output something like this. So here uh, the x-axis is all the timestamp and the y-axis is a sequence number. And you can see the dip here, that is like, uh, it's a delay between the two sequence number. And you can dig deep more to understand why there is a delay. To find this from, that, uh, from the actual PCAP log, it will take a lot of time to draw this chart. So we have both our downlink sequence number and uplink sequence number. And then we have like delta time for all the packets. So it can do this kind of analysis. And one more feature in PCAP is end-to-end -end analysis. But if you have like three different files from the UE and from the radio access network and from the core, it can correlate all these three files and say where the delay is. So here I would choose all the three files. So, G, I have a question. Mm. If, if I don't have a uh, radio core network to pull PCAP files from, how do I go about getting something like that from T-Mobile or somebody? Oh, no, probably you need to call us. Then we have to schedule some end-to-end -end tracing. So normally you can get PCAP from device, right, by TCP dump. But to get trace actually in our network from different interfaces, we have to arrange that end-to-end -end tracing. We need to enable some probing. Uh, for your session, we are going to take the log for you. So that requires some manual process. Yeah, 
so when you use three different files from different nodes then you have to choose like which sequence number you want to analyze so here i chose like 200509 and then hit like enter in analysis Yeah, so in the past, this has been an eyeball exercise. So we have uh, three engineers, one from device side, one from radio access network side, one from core side. Three so of us will sit together and we're just looking at, okay, so this is a packet sequence number of this, IP ID of that. Let's try to find the same packet in your trace, in your log. Then we'll say why this packet has some problem. It has been very slow as you can imagine. So this will enable us to do the similar analysis much faster. So here is the output like it, uh, it generates. So here you can see a triangle one. So it shouldn't be something like this. It, sh it should follow the same curve. But here by looking at this, you can understand there was a delay of like 29 seconds between uh, radio access network and the uh, device. Then you have to look deep like why there is a delay between the two nodes. So these are the features which we can do analyze from the PCAP logs. Uh, I will I will show you next ISF from radio radio logs. Oh, question? Yeah, question. I don't know if there's any OEMs here, but uh, this would certainly have been a big benefit in a past life of mine when I worked for an OEM, mm -hmm. because there was always the need to understand where things were broken. Uh, have you shared this with your OEM partners like Samsung, Nokia, Microsoft, HTC, uh, because I, or even like Darren Kimball's team? Uh, those they would they would kill for visibility and understanding for a tool like this. Uh, that's a very good question. So we have now shared this more internal tool, but we internally we have shared with some our engineering team, operations team. We have shared this with Google, for example, for YouTube team. They also want to understand. And uh, so past month, we have helped a network operation team to debug uh, a data store issue. So they are actually, they are sending five engineers actually from radio access network point of view to train with us, especially looking at this portion radio analysis. Also, Ericsson expressed interest. We just have not advertised much about the tool. Yet this may be the first series of your show. Thank you. I wonder uh, how feasible or even desirable it would be to um, be able to read, capture, uh, packet capture files from other uh, third-party tools like, um, you know, Network Monitor. Like Microsoft has a tool that, you know, collects uh, IP uh, packets as well. From a device or from network? From the network, you know, so you can just put a, a device on the wire and it'll just, you know, sniff whatever's mm -hmm. on the wire. Yeah, so this actually sh should be a general tool, right? We look at the uh, PCAP, so we start from device because we are device QE lab, but we also have used this to analyze network PCAP tool, the similar, it's also Wireshark, but because it's tapped in our network interface, it has some different field, then we have to adapt a little bit to be able to read all the fields. Then similarly, if it's PCAP, it can be analyzed, so maybe we have to tweak some field, uh, that's possible as well. And uh, we, if you look on the graph here, so we have taken the log from the GI interface. Also, we have taken the log from a server. So that server is a datum server. It's by Spirant. There's a tool. So we can do FTP throughput. So we can take the FTP uh, pickup from the FTP server, also in our network, then from the device. So it's a generalized tool. So now it's a very important part, radio analysis. I believe this is what this QE analyzer is more unique about because you can use Wireshark to look at most of the metrics we have shown you. It's, this is only to present a more uh, automated way of looking some metrics that we care about. But this radio analysis, I believe uh, it's very difficult to do and we're able to do it more elegantly. Yep. And so for radio analysis, the features which we support are like um, for for uh, 3G or 4G logs. What we can do is like we can we can draw the radio stat radio states 
radio state transition times and the RLC PDUs, uplink and downlink retransmissions and stuff and then radio signaling, exchange between the mobile and the network. So you have to choose like which, which all the features you are interested in. So here I chose everything for 3G, 4G and then click on analyze. It would take a couple of seconds to generate the... We, we have also optimized it too. I think before this may take a few minutes. Yeah. For the bigger file, it may take 20 minutes. But our developer actually also has done some optimization. Now it's reduced two seconds. Now it's more than 10 seconds already. Yeah. But this would take around 50 to 60 seconds because the file is very large. Uh, yeah, yeah, before. And then we are doing many features at a time. Yeah, before the optimization, I don't think we're able to give you a real time demo. Sometimes it take one hour, so we couldn't show you even. So the input is the QXDM log, right? Yeah, input yeah. is QXDM. Do you know what QXDM is? You know probably from OER. Yeah. But then to explain to rest of you guys who doesn't know QXDM, so most of device, devices have a radio chipset, right? So a lot of devices these days use chipset from Qualcomm. So Qualcomm has a device diagnostic tool called QXDM. So it can take a lot of logs from the chipset, multiple layers. And we use that to debug the device problem. So if we take that log, this tool can analyze radio information. That's done. So it would generate output something like this. So for radio graphs, this is the So here it can draw the radio transition uh, transition graph. Like when it comes down, it means the device is in idle state, and then here it is in fat state and in a DCH state. So it can draw all the radio state transitions, and then it can show like how much time the device was in DCH state, how much time the device was in fat state, and different states of the mobile device. Yes, can I add a comment? So yeah. you look at the yellow lines. Can you show the mm -hmm. yellow line? So shows how much time a device is trying to sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up, kind of. Right? Remember I told you in the 1-1, well it's 1-1, we want to let the device sleep or rest as much as possible to save the power, also save the radio resource. So you can say in this simple test, I don't know how long, how many times actually device goes to sleep and then come back. So it's a com complicated pro uh, system because there are so many uh, mobility related related features. So here uh, we can see that RLC AMPDUs and RLC DLPDUs. So all the lines here, it should be like straight line, something like this. But here you have a break. At the second line, you see a break. So that means it shouldn't happen. So when you see the break, you can analyze, like, you can think like E node B is not sending the packets to device. And here you can analyze more from the E node B side why the E node B is not sending packets to device. To draw this conclusion from the logs but with manual analysis, it takes like maybe a couple of days or a week to get to this, this analysis. Yeah, exactly. So this is more lower uh, level information. Maybe most of people don't care about it's about a communication between the device and the cell tower. So if something breaks there. And then I would like to show you for the LTE as well. Yeah. So different access technology, actually the logs will look different. So if it's LTE, the most recent advanced technology, the log will look like this. But if it's 2G, 3G, it will look like that. So analysis, we have to apply different uh, intelligence. So this is done.
So here you can see clearly the radio state, uh, radio state transition times. When it comes down, it means the device is in idle state. When it goes up, it means the device is in connected state. In LTE, like we have only two radio states, connected and idle. That's the reason it's very clear here when compared to 3G or 4G. And then in LTE, the other feature we implemented is like to draw the throughput across different layers in the radio layer, like uh, from PDCP and RLC. Oh, looks like it doesn't have a PDCP packets here. But usually it will, it will draw a different, uh, I think we have a... Mm. So here you can see the throughput graph. A PDCP layer is in blue color and the RLC layer is in yellow color. If it is, if it matches both of it, it means there is no issue. But if you see there is difference between both the lines, then you have to find out like, you can think of like it's the issue in PDCP or RLC, depending upon which line has lower throughput. And then analyze from there. So PDCP and RLC are two layers below the IP layers, two of the a few radio layers in the chipset. And then this is very unique feature here, cross layer feature. Uh, this feature, what it can do is it can map the IP packet with the relevant PDUs from the lower layer, from the lower layers. So you can see here, like uh, I have choose like two files. One is like PCAP file and one from the radio file, both from the same device. And then click on like which are uh, all the features which are interested in. And then you have to key in the frame number from the PCAP which you want to draw um, uh, correlate with the radio states. So I'm just choosing like 600 frame. Yeah, this is really to analyze. We already know this frame number equals 700 in the Wireshark PCAP file has some problem. Then we want to say, uh, what is the radio information correlated? I think this will be very helpful to the radio network engineers, including Ericsson and Edison, so they have expressed uh, interest as well. This takes the longest time? No, it shouldn't, but... So do you have any question or are you even interested in this kind of analysis? I'm very impressed. I think the OEMs would be very, very interested in this. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if they have some internal tool like this. <coughs> Excuse me. They absolutely do, but it is not the end to end. And the end to end is the gold mine to understand where something breaks down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think because we have trouble to map with eyeball. That's why we built the two mainly to help ourselves in the beginning. And in the past, if we say the, for example, we say DNS lookup time is five seconds, 10 seconds. We want to understand why this is taking long time and timestamp equals to T1. Then we need to go to QXDM logs, open up QCAT, find the same exactly similar time, look at the all different logs and trying to say what is going wrong. So this is helps that level of analysis to be done much faster. So we got the output here. So here uh, we get the timestamp from the QXTM and then here it shows like how, ma how many bytes the packet was, whether it was a SYN packet or SYNAC or, or it just prints like what the packet is and the timestamp from the QXTM. And then these are like 3204 and 32045. These are the two PDUs which carry the data of the SYN packet. So we have similar to that, like all the PDUs and then what packet it carries. Sorry. Smoke coming out of it. 
You guys didn't need that projector anymore, did you? Um, no. <laughs> Good, because I don't think anybody's using it for a while. It's coming back on. Is it Recovered. I've never seen a piece of electronic have smoke coming out of it and then come back on. Yeah, yeah. Cool. it did. It popped and smoked. Can you show so, uh, the Excel cool. again? <laughs> Uh, as uh, we wait for Karanthi to show us that again, uh, the fire exits are through the back door <laughs> and then over off to the left. All right, thanks. Yeah, I just want to point out that this column is, uh, say, this is TCP flag, right? So TCP, you will establish a connection. Those are IP packets that we, this we analyze both PCAP and the QXDM, log, two logs at the same time. Then we find out which IP, this IP packet is carried on which lower layer sequence number. So this need to have the intelligence of both Wireshark and the QXDM. So even a manual analysis, it is like very difficult to map the packets. So with this, we can do it in seconds for all the packets, for all the things which are present in the logs. And then here for each PDU, you have like for IP packet here, you have like whether it, the IP packet got retransmission or not, retransmission information. And from PDUs as well, you have like two, five, four, seven, and then zero. It means there is no retransmissions. And for some cases, you will have like one PDU with like 13 or 14 times retrans retransmission. So I think, I believe this has part of uh, University of Michigan Stevens yeah. uh, contribution. And I think the paper is accepted by IMC conference and it's going to be published uh, by the end of year. So we also sponsor university research and Jack actually come from that research group. Uh, question. So uh, are you familiar with this network monitor from Microsoft? Network monitor yeah. from Microsoft? Sorry, yes. I'm not. No. Are you? Yeah. Yes, she is. So they have the ability to um, accept third-party uh, parsers. So you can write a parser that tells it how to interpret uh, and correlate uh, packets or, or uh, packets at each layer and sort of see which uh, protocol is encapsulated where. Have you thought about writing something like that? Rather than, it sounds like where you're, st you're starting from scratch, building an, uh, an analyzer. Would it make sense to any any possibility that that would be helpful? Uh, First, I don't know what the network. Uh, yeah, we didn't do much ana much uh, analysis on that one. But is that more a network side of uh, uh, parser uh, for the pickup only, or it? If you say multiple layers, do they include what layers? Do they uh, well, I've used it only for Ethernet. So okay. Ethernet, TCP/IP, IP. And you're not referring to WinPCAP. No. Okay. <clears throat> no. It's, it's years and years ago. Used to ship with SMS, uh, and you can still download it. It's free. I'm pretty sure, and just run it. C capture stuff directly off of the wire. Um, I don't know. Oh, so it's more for the Ethernet. So it can correlate between the Mac layer, yeah. IP layer, yeah. and the TCP layer. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you know, it's got all kinds of. Like it's got a HTTP analyzer or a, you know whatever protocol you might have, uh, you know that you you can basically write your own <coughs> parsers. parsers and then plug it in so you've got all of the file handling and. Mm, that's interesting. Know, I have parts. never heard of that. So it's m more like a platform you can plug in your yeah. different parsers, mm -hmm. although it's designed more for the network side, right? So it's Ethernet. Uh, <coughs> Wired I, I imagine that you would be able to tell it to parse PCAPs as well, but I don't. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it's it's impressive work, and I, you know, above my my head. But having looked at, at those and had some experience there, I just wonder if it might be less work to start with a platform. Sure, we can take a look. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for the information. Yeah, we just, uh, I think we have tried in the beginning, we tried to ask Metrico to, to develop some tool for us, but uh, the turnaround time always is uh, longer, right? So in the end, we just find a developer, we do this 
internally and quantity work with mm -hmm. Zach very closely and then they can do this very fast. So I'm going to show you the last last analysis one, that's the application layer analysis. So here we get the log files from the Android devices like in the form of logcat. You have to choose like how, uh, we developed this logcat analysis only for YouTube uh, to draw the different metrics like video startup time, buffer time and other stuff. So you have to choose like here it can accept like 50 to 100 files at a time. So here I chose like six files and logcat testing and then click on YouTube. So it's already generated the output. It's oh. yeah. So here it can show like how much time the video took to start the video and what was the buffer, how many times it buffered, average buffer time and rebuffer count, buffer ratio, all this stuff. It's like very useful information. If you want to get this information manually, you have to do the stopwatch and get the stuff. But with this, uh, it's very easy, convenient way to get all the metrics. So this is more true customer experience metrics. For example, if you have a, your own application, if you have some event log, in your log casting, I start this event A, then I stop and the here for the event A, then event B, then this is one way to actually do a statistical analysis of those events. I think that's, that's all. all. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you have any questions, you can send this, send the email to this ID. Or if you want to get access to the QE analyzer, and you can just sign the page, send the legal page, then we can give you today as well. Or you can contact us later. So I have a question, G. Uh, if I have my application and I am seeing some problems with connecting to the network or if I have a lot of latency with whatever my application is, um, how do I interact with you guys and what's the process to run through that? Like, do I just bring you my logcat and say, here I see a bunch of problems, can you help me figure out what's going on or, or how how did you interact with that? So first you have to check if that's T-Mobile phone or not. If it's AT&T or Verizon, you don't have to come to us. So I'm just joking. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, through this platform, this meetup, right? I think for application developers, they can first reach out to you guys and uh, we can work together. You can be the gate for the developer community. All right. Okay. Any additional questions? Okay. Okay. Well, I hope uh, I hope that it was pretty informative. That uh, got to take a look at some of our uh, tools that we've been working on. Um, hopefully, some of you guys will be interested in taking a look at at least using the web client. Um, what are the features of the web client, and how they differ with the desktop one? What what things can I do with that? I think most are. There are only the optimization, meaning it takes longer time. Okay. So the optimization for the responsiveness is not there yet. Okay, but I can still correlate the different layers and, and see if there's dropped packets and things like that? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay, great. All right, so yeah, we invite you to take a look at that. And if you know anybody who would be interested in that, they can uh, give us a call. Um, like all of our uh, meetups, we'll have it on the web at some point, and then people can take a look at that um, and download the slides, which will be made available and stuff like that. So thank uh, G and Kranthi for coming out tonight. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, feel free to hang out a little bit longer and grab another sandwich for the road, and uh, hopefully the place won't burn down with the projectors. So <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Thank you.